Hello and welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where since the beginning of this year, we have been working on a separate project. But I needed a quick and easy video. And I thought, hey, why don't I just do, where does the index of refraction come from? Well, as always here in the training center, what I thought was going to take 10 minutes turned into a two week ordeal. Index of refraction part one. And I do hope you stick with me through two and three. Things get kind of interesting. N is the symbol we use most often in opticianry to indicate the index of refraction of a given material. Today we are talking about the index of refraction. We are not talking about refraction. The rule or the definition, if you will, is the higher or greater the index of refraction, 5053, 586, 60, 67, 70, 74. The greater the index of refraction, the slower the light travels through that given material and the more the light, and bends is not the word you want to use, the more the light changes direction. This is why a 1.74, a material with an index of refraction of 1.74, can be thinner than one with an index of refraction of 1.53, yet be of equal power. Now, there's a little tiny bit more to that, but that certainly will suffice for our definitions and explanations for this section. We are not solving for anything. All we're doing by indicating an index of refraction is rewording or giving ourselves a different way of saying the exact same thing. What is that thing? The relationship between the speed of light in air or a vacuum when compared to the speed of light in a given material. For instance, the index of refraction for polycarbonate, a brand name or a material, would be equal to 186,000 miles per second in air, 117,000 miles per second in this given material. The index of refraction for that given material becomes 1.586. It's easier to call up the lab and say, I need a poly or a 1.586 than it is to say, I need the lens material that slows light down to 117,276. But you are saying exactly that. It is a ratio, it is a relationship, it is an expression of that ratio or relationship between these two things. Now, you can kind of work it the other way as well. You can say that you have the speed of light in a given material is equal to the speed of light in air divided by an index. Speed of light and air, 186,000 miles per second. The index of refraction for polycarbonate is 1.586. If you did that, it would tell you that the speed of light traveling through polycarbonate is 117,276 miles per second. Everywhere you look online, all your textbooks, this is what you're going to see. And I'm, I'm actually get out of the way there for a second. You're going to see this. You're going to see an example. They'll probably talk about this. And if this is good for you, this works, you, this is what you need to know and you're comfortable with, hit the stop button and um, go do whatever it was you were doing before you tuned in. I don't think this carries things quite far enough. And then on top of that, we jumped down to the rabbit hole and discovered a whole new world. Let's hit Index of Refraction Part 2. You decided to join us for Part 2. Well, thanks. Things don't get really weird until Part 3. We have the speed of light in air, vacuum, really. Air is always what's on this side of a lens because that's what we have. Air, light, 
lens I, how it compares to the speed of light in any given material or lens material. Air, light in air or in a vacuum has a constant speed of 186,000 miles per second. Because that is a constant, we can assign it the value of one. And then everything else that we're thinking about, every other lens material, we're comparing it to that. The speed in a given material will slow depending on the material. This is everything. And you want to put another word in there, I know. But that's where we're headed. So the relationship becomes, how does this compare to this? Or as a ratio, how many times does this number go into this number? A ray of light is whizzing along at 186,000 miles per second. It enters a lens material and it slows to 116,250 miles per second. Quite a bit. As a ratio, how many times does this go into this? It goes in 1.6 times. Or if we want to write it out, 1.60. From 186,000 miles down to 116,250 is a loss or a slowing of light by 69,750 miles per second. Or to put it another way, light in air travels 60% faster than it does in this given lens material. Or you could say, that light travels in air 1.6 times faster than it does in this particular lens material. Now, this is everything. The material is not 1.60. And we do order it that way, we say it that way, but think of poly, think of CR39, think of Trivex, think of all those other brand names and monomer names it is a material that has an index of refraction of 1.60. Those are two very different things, and you need to wrap your head around that. You may have noticed by now that I have not used the word density. It's so easy to think of it that way. You know, you dive off of a rock into the water and you're in air and your body goes into the water and it slows way, way down because the water is so much more dense than the air is. That's what we're taught. That's what we think. We would normally say, and the speed of light slows because it enters the lens material, which is denser. Well, it turns out that's not actually how it works. Index of refraction part three. Honestly, folks, we just found this stuff interesting. We were talking about putting this particular one together. We started kicking around some ideas. We realized that we had some gaps in our understanding. We went online, we watched some videos. We'll put up a link at the end of this for you. We are taught, we say, we see, we teach that as rays of light passing through air enter a medium that is denser than the air, that light will slow down and it will slow down and change direction if it hits at an angle other than that perpendicular to the normal, you know, Snell's Law stuff. And it's so easy to think that as the density of the material goes up, the more the light is going to slow down and the more the direction is going to change and as index goes up, that's, that's not right. That's not how it works. Yes, light will always slow down when it enters a medium of a greater density than air, but that how dense that material is actually doesn't have anything to do with it. Look what happens. The density of crown glass is 2.59 grams per cubic centimeter, roughly the size of a dice. Okay? If I have one cubic centimeter, a dice, of crown glass, it weighs 2.59 grams. It's a lot, it's really, really dense. There's just so much material packed into such a little area. The density of Trivex, however, at 1.11 is not very dense at all. In fact, it's, all, I mean, there's like nothing. You had a, a cube like that, a dice made of Trivex, you, you could barely tell you had it in your hand. Just one little gram. Now the index of refraction, how much does light slow down in crown glass, that super crazy dense stuff? It's 1.52. 
The index of refraction for Trivex is super crazy, not very dense, lightweight stuff. How much does it slow light down? 1.53. Which brings us to rut row. <laughs> that neat little picture that we have in our head really doesn't work anymore. Why does light slow down in a given material? Why does material whatever have an index of refraction of whatever? The truth of the matter, we don't know. It probably comes down to energy interference. And it is a good time, a good place to remember to think that there is no such thing as a ray of light. That is a, a concept that we use in our heads to draw out and think about, conceptualize energy. Light is a form of energy. Energy is also holding together, creating the structure of these materials, a 170 or a 153. It is the energy of the atoms within these materials interfering, most likely, this is the closest theory that we can get, interfering with the energy of the light that is trying to pass through it. Which is why you can have an extremely dense material and an extremely not dense material have the same refractive index. They will slow light down just as much. It will change direction just as much. So we wanted to share that with you. That's really it there. Um, index of refraction, part one, part two, and part three. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that every lens in whatever index of refraction it might be comes from Laramie K. If you're watching me on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. If you're watching me on Facebook, please give us a like and leave me a comment. I will see you again next week.